Hello everybody, today we're going to look at a problem that has to do with centripetal acceleration and centripetal forces as a vehicle makes a turn around a corner. It's a fairly simplistic turn that the car is making. We just have a circular track. We are told that the radius of this track is 250 meters and then I have a vehicle that's sitting over here. At any given point, its velocity is going to be perpendicular to that line that I just drew for the radius. So it does indeed have a changing velocity as it makes its way around this course. So that's why I actually call it a speed of 35 meters per second up here. So it's going to travel around at a constant speed so the magnitude of the velocity vector stays constant. But it is indeed accelerating. It, is a centripetal acceleration. Remember, centripetal just means inward pointing. So it's continuously being accelerated towards the center of the circle. And the thing that's allowing it to do that is, of course, friction. You can always justify this by imagining to yourself, as this car is coming this direction, what would happen if all of a sudden you got rid of all the possible friction associated with it and it would have to just continue on in a straight line. It would never actually be able to turn. So that would be like hitting a patch of slippery ice. You need the friction in order to have a centripetal acceleration. So let's take a look at a free body diagram of all of this now that we have an idea of what the problem itself looks like. This box right here is just going to be the car so there's the tires. There's an FG pointing down. There's an FN pointing up. Let's say that the center is over here somewhere. And then here's that radius. So this obviously is no longer to scale. But this was 250 meters. So the car is kind of turning left here because we're looking at it from the rear. And there is down here, it's happening at the tires. But I'm going to show the free body diagram as the friction pushing in right there. So there is an FF. Now, if you are looking at it this way, and plus think about the rolling of the tires, it is actually a static friction at the surface of the tire. The tire is not slipping against the actual pavement, and so I'm going to be calling it a static friction. I know the car is moving, but again, the surface, the tire surface is not slipping against the pavement, so it is static you will recall that I try to make it as linear as possible for what you should do in these problems. You should ask yourself, do I know the acceleration? If you do know the acceleration, you should start with Newton's second law. F net is equal to mass times acceleration. Now, when you come look up at this problem, you say, well, I don't know the acceleration. But I want you to think about it more broadly here. Do you have the ability to talk about the acceleration knowing this information, that the speed of the car is 35 meters per second and the radius of the turn is 250 meters? You do actually. The centripetal inward pointing acceleration can be defined as V squared divided by R. So again, this acceleration can be 35, I'm going to leave out the units squared, divided by 250. So I actually have a number for that. And I will go ahead and write it down. It happens to be 4.9 meters per second squared. Okay, so now we truly know the acceleration. So we truly do start over here on Newton's second law. So I can say that F net is equal to the mass of the car times the acceleration is 4.9 meters per second squared. And then once you use that equation, you go on to our other variation, which says that F net is equal to the sum of the forces. So F1 plus F2 plus F3 plus however many forces you have. Well, I have three forces in this particular problem. There's an FG, there's an FN, and then there's a FF, a friction. I know that FG is going to cancel FN. And so I'm not even going to bother putting them in here. I could if I wanted to, but I would know that they would just cancel each other out. What I'm going to actually find is that the F net is equal to just one lone little force, which is the friction, the static friction. So what you need is you need to be able to describe the static friction. So of course we have our equation that static friction 
is less than or equal to but I'm going to be interested in friction giving us as much as it can so I'm going to use the equals part of this mu s times the fn so even though the fn cancels in the sum of my forces I do need to know something about it when you come over here you know that fg that was pointing down is equal to mg so mass times negative 9.8 the normal force that's up there is going to be equal in magnitude to that it's just that it's going to be positive in its sign so the fn that's at the top of that free body diagram is going to be equal to m times positive 9.8 meters per second squared so if m times 9.8 is that quantity all I need to do is stick a mu s in front of it and I have my friction force so now I can say that the static friction is equal to mu s times m times positive 9.8 meters per second squared now look at what we have here there's a bunch of stuff written on the board but this is an expression here for static friction which is right there which is equal to the net force which is equal to mass times 4.9 meters per second squared so I'm gonna get myself a little board space over here and rewrite this hopefully a little bit clearer I have the friction force mu s times m times 9.8 I'm gonna leave out the units is equal to f net is equal to mass times acceleration which was 4.9 meters per second squared notice the mass cancels is actually irrelevant what the mass of the car is and now I have mu s is equal to 4.9 divided by 9.8 mu s is equal to 0 0.5 and that is actually my final answer so if mu was bigger than that the car could actually go a little bit faster and it could still manage to make it a around the turn if mu was smaller than 0.5 I wouldn't have enough friction in order to keep the car firmly on the track the wheels would slip I would then have to move into a kinetic friction regime but definitely the car would go skidding off somewhere hopefully that made sense to you and if it did you should let your computer know